welcome to this chirp from Kegworth Baptist Church, where we try and share something of our faith with you. If you want to know more, please do feel free to contact us. You can visit us at our website www.kegworthbaptist.org.uk or you can visit our Facebook page or YouTube page. We look forward to hearing from you. Talking about the crucifixion of Jesus, John's Gospel says, The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you may also believe. After the resurrection, Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Christians are not called just to meet together so that we can have a nice time. Christianity is not about living by a set of rules. Scripture tells us we are called to be witnesses for Christ, to go and make disciples. And that command is not just for pastors and preachers, it's for everyone who calls themselves a follower of Christ. So the question is, how can we be witnesses for Christ? Testimony is telling what you have witnessed about Christ. Not what other people say about Christ, it's what you have seen and experienced. You might not be an expert about the Bible, or a skilled teacher, but you have a story that you know better than anyone else. The thing about testimony is that no one can say it's untrue. It's the story of what happened to you. It's not an opinion or a theology. It's a statement of what happened. 
and if you say what happened, no one can deny it. As an example of testimony, I'll share something of my testimony with you. I was brought up as a non-Christian. I looked to be a good person, often failing, and feeling there was something more to life. My first encounter with Christianity was at school. Village school where I lived until I was 12 was a Church of England aided school. We therefore attended church every term. But it did not mean anything to me. I did not understand the traditions and ceremonies. I remember on one occasion being very embarrassed attending a school harvest festival and I'd not brought a gift and having to walk up to the front of the church with everyone else who did have a gift. On another occasion I remember being laughed at when reading a Bible passage aloud because I thought Satan was Saturn. I didn't know what or who Satan was. However, some of what was taught did sink in, and I can remember praying to God and being disappointed that my prayers were not instantly and miraculously answered. I now know that, that is not God's way. In the final year at primary school, we studied other religions, and Buddhism seemed very relevant to me, and I decided that I would be a Buddhist. I attended a very modern and secular secondary school. There was no RE and no assemblies, I suspect illegally, and I developed a moral awareness, taking action to raise awareness of issues such as human rights and environmental issues. I also started a role play club, playing games such as Dungeons and Dragons, Bushido and Traveller. I flirted with the occult, tarot, telepathy, etc. At this time I classed myself as a humanist, but I was aware there was something out there, and I'd occasionally still try praying. I thought of myself as a bit of an academic, a nerd, and groups of us met in the school library to debate all sorts of things, and I'd often try to prove Christianity was rubbish. A girl named Amanda invited me to go to her church, and I agreed. It was an Elim Pentecostal church. Well, remember, I'd only ever been into a high Anglican church, so it blew my mind away. It was like nothing I'd ever seen or heard before. I could not wait to get out of there and as far away as possible. Amanda, however, gave me a book to read. Your Verdict on the Empty Tomb of Jesus by Val Grieve. I read this and found I had to agree that Jesus was resurrected, that he came back to life. And if that was true, then it seemed plausible that the rest of Christianity was also true. However, I took this no further at that time, although I did later, as you'll hear. So it's worth remembering that just because someone doesn't respond to you there and then, it doesn't mean it's been a waste of time. I then started college in Crewe. This is scary, for the first time living away from home with people I didn't know. But I soon made friends with a guy named Adrian, and it turned out he was a born-again Christian. Adrian invited me to a big evangelical event. Some guy named D. Graham was doing an event in London, and it was being transmitted around the country and shown on screens. I knew from the beginning it was make or break time. I had to give my life to Jesus. I felt God challenging me to decide for him or against him, and I chose to follow him. There were no amazing miracles, no fanfares of music, no tongues of fire or being slain in the spirit. It was almost a bit of a letdown, but I started my life with Christ. I soon joined the local independent church where I was baptised. By then I was dating Cathy and she came with her mum, who I think thought it was a bit strange being baptised at 19. God gave me occasional words for others. On one occasion I stayed up to the early morning talking to the girlfriend of a Christian at a youth hostel and the warden didn't enforce the usual curfew. On another occasion, 
I knew a severely disabled girl was about to go home to heaven. And before she died, I was given a word for her foster parents. God does talk to us if we're willing to listen. But there have been some bad times. When my mother-in-law died. When the church we were attending went into meltdown. When the house we were renting was no longer available. And when I was unhappy in my job. But God saw us through these difficulties. At the last minute, another house became available, literally days before we were due to move out. I returned to university and then found new employment. God has always provided our needs. I started working at Broomfield College. One of the lecturers there was a born again Christian. He decided to start a Christian union at the college. Which I got involved in and my faith grew. When my job at Broomfield College became at risk, the same day I found advertised a job at Rushcliffe Borough Council. And before I ever went for the interview, I knew I'd get that job. That was the least stressful interview I've ever had. When we moved to Kegworth, we were not attending any church. So while I was away on business, I think decided to try the churches and ended up at Kegworth Baptist Church. When I returned home, I came with her, and it fe felt like I was home in this church. I believe God is with us always, through the tough times as well as the easy times, and if we're willing to follow him, he will lead us where he wants. In 2006, our minister, Colin White, was due to retire. I felt God was prompting me to step up and take on the leadership for a while. My secular employer was happy for me to go part-time to enable this. I might not have been the best pastor, but during the next 13 years, I worked to support and build the church, which under God's guidance continued to stay mainly stable and serve the village of Kegworth as a light shining in the darkness. In 2018 and 2019, I felt God was saying it was time for me to hand on the baton and God brought Johnny Ford to take on the pastorate, just as we entered the COVID pandemic in 2020. However, again, God supported the church through this time, helping it to continue to serve and to grow. One of the Bible passages I particularly relate to is when Paul said, I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. If Paul, a great man of God, struggled with doing what's right, then there is hope for everyone, including me. God has stayed by my side all through my life, through some hard times and times of great joy. And I hope my testimony has shown you how I came to know Christ and may perhaps encourage you to keep seeking him all of your life. So think about your story what it was like before you were a Christian, if Christianity is relevant, what changed when you became a Christian, why you became a Christian, when and how, and say what has happened since you became a Christian. Or if you've never known a time without Christ, what he, is, what he has done for you throughout your life. Prepare your testimony and be prepared to share it with others as an encouragement, as an invitation, as a witness for Christ. Let's join together in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you have really revealed yourself to us, that you love us and care for us, but that you want us also to share that love with others. Lord, help us to be your servants, to be your witnesses in this world, claiming your truth to others. Amen. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, Lord, be all else to me, say,